Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Nova Scotia today. So yes, I am in Nova Scotia. I am in the South Shore in Nova Scotia. Um, I'm gonna show you around the property for a quick sec and I'm gonna go jump in the truck because it's windy out right now. I don't want the sound to be terrible. But before we head back to the to the new property, I wanted to you know show you guys around my current property for a second. Welcome all the new subscribers because there's a lot of new new subscribers, new viewers that have that have been popping by. Um, so thank you for watching. I figured I'd give a little bit of background on who I am, um, you know, all that sort of stuff, and uh, then we'll head on back and get into the video. But first, I will show you this current property, and yes, this was also a uh, as is abandoned situation. I'm gonna put a link to this to the video when we first took ownership of this place. So you guys can watch it, check it out, take a look at what it looked like, and you can understand why a lot of people were scared of this property, but I looked at it and seen potential. Um, just for the property itself, the way you see this house right now is certainly not the way that this house looked um, when, we, when we bought it. That's for sure, there's been a lot of changes here. Um, fortunately, I can do a lot of those changes myself. I've got to the equipment. But we've done a lot of work here, um, as it is. There's lots more left to do, but it's a definitely a beautiful, beautiful spot. Now that the leaves are gone, you can really see the lake. Okay, so this isn't just for the new viewers. Um, it's for all the viewers, really. Um, a lot of people know that, you know, I have an excavation company. I do brush removal, vegetation management, you know, construction, contracting work, all this sort of stuff. But I never really ever told anyone uh, what my background is, where I came from. So I'm from a small little town, it's actually a community, called New Ross, New Ross, Nova Scotia. Where I grew up, a uh, very, very, very normal, average childhood life. Um, my father worked at a plant making siding, where he worked there for, oh, I'd have to ask him, but between 40 and 45 years, I think. Uh, he worked shift work on his days off. He worked in the woods. Uh, he worked a lot, you know. He he's a hard working, hard working man. My mother was um, she she's she's a continued care worker right now. She originally worked at nursing homes and she did continued care for a long time and she's still doing that. So I came I come from a very you know blue collar working family. I'm the youngest of two kids. I grew up playing sports. I grew up biking from one fishing hole to another fishing hole, one swimming hole to another swimming hole. That's what I did. Um, my father played lots of sports. I grew up watching all of his sports and I absolutely loved it. There's nothing about my childhood that I would change. We obviously, we, we, we always had everything that we ever needed, uh, you know, and, and then some, but we certainly not like a wealthy family. I didn't inherit a business. I didn't inherit, um, you know, anything. It's, uh, that it's it's just typical typical childhood and I loved it. I loved my childhood. My first job um, as a kid was was for five bucks an hour shearing Christmas trees and then haying because if you were a boy or a girl in my community, that's what you did. That was always your that was always your first job. Um, you know, then going up through high school, I knew at an early age that I wasn't going to be going to university for any type of degree. After high school, I went to Yellowknife for a year and lived with my uncle and worked. Came back, got a job with the town of Chester, who I'd spent a couple summers working with. They hired me on full time. I worked there for like eight to ten years. And then I, because of whatever, I ended up going and trying a few different things. I worked in construction. Um, I worked in a sales gig for a little while. And then I just wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't getting ahead. I wasn't where I needed to be. I had myself in kind of a bad financial situation. I had a lot of buddies that were out west working. So I went out west, worked in the oil plants, um, and uh, just saved all the money that I could, paid off the crap that I had done, you know, spending money when I shouldn't have been spending money, uh, and started saving, started saving. Um, didn't live, you know, didn't didn't go buying lots of things. Uh, just was very conservative with my money. But I always wanted to own my own company. I worked for some good people. I worked for some bad people. And I always said that if I if I owned my own company, I would try to be as absolutely fair to all my employees as possible. Some people tell me that I'm a little bit too fair. But anyway, um, 
So yeah, so I, I had an opportunity come up with a uh, with a company to do a few brush removal sites for them. Just starting off, do a few brush removal sites. I After talking to my wife, I said I really would like a change. I don't want to go on flying back and forth anymore. I'd love to come home, work from home. So we went for it. We went for it. And then uh, they, after, you know, after a little while of doing some brush jobs for me, they asked me, hey, could you do this? Could you do that? Would you be able to take on this? Would you be able to take on that? And I just never said no. When I first started, I had the I had the cheapest truck I could buy, the two cheapest saws I could buy, a wood chipper, and one guy. And away we went. And um, they just they kept asking if I could do more, and I just always said yes. I've never said no. Christmas Day, I got called out a few years ago, and I was gone for four days. So now I have you know three excavators. I've got some trucks. I got some trailers. I've got some nice things for sure. But I certainly don't live. Um, you know a lavish lifestyle Here I am sitting in my, in my work clothes that I wear all the time. There's you know, there's rips in them. They're dirty I um, I don't go, you know, I, I, I live a very average life. That is for sure I'd much rather be sitting by a campfire Eating a uh, eating a burger than go to a fancy restaurant and, and get dressed up. That's just that's just not who I am at all um, so anyway, I, I thought I'd take a couple minutes just to, just to talk to you guys and let you guys know, you know, who I am, where I came from, where we're at in Nova Scotia. But anyway, that is enough about me. You guys came to watch the cottage, so let's get to it. Okay, folks, so we are back here. My father just arrived. It's me, my father, Ashley, and Tony and Wendell. So here, you know, we picked up from last weekend. We haven't really got started here right now. We're going to do some work here. Uh, get a few more danger trees down. I don't know if I'm going to get the danger trees down in front of the house today. That's a big job on its own. But first thing first, a lot of people were saying that they didn't think this place was left. This place was abandoned or, you know, I used the wrong word for the wording or whatever. But this place was not maintained for uh, like six years. The last time they were here was in 2015. So when they... Again, I mean, you know, you see this guy's work shed and stuff. This guy was, he took care of his stuff. He was meticulous. He has a, he has a log of every time that he changed the oil in the generator. And the last time he changed it was June 6th, 2015. And they got a new engine before 2012. So 2015 was the last time that he changed the oil in this. Now I do need to change the oil. Um, I've, I've changed the, the coolant fluid. So here's the first, you know, proof that it was that it was left, that it was a left for six years. So I'll show you some more stuff inside the house. You know, there's some squirrel droppings and stuff like that. But the place is still great. Like it's it's holding up really, really, really well. That's for sure. So the next question, um, probably the most asked question, is price. How much did we pay for this? Okay. So I mentioned that it was listed for two years, and it was. It was listed for two years. It was originally listed for six hundred thousand dollars, five ninety nine. And I've seen this on the market. It was on the market before we bought our house that we're in now. So this was listed. People are asking me, how do you find these places? This was listed, and my house was listed. My house, you couldn't get insurance on it because the house was so far gone. So we had to get creative. We came up with the money. We fixed it up and we were able to then get the mortgage for it. So with this place, it was listed for $5.99 and then they, in September of this year, they dropped it to $5.29. We offered $500 and they took it. So we were going to get a mortgage on it because this, as far as insurance goes, it doesn't need much to get insurance, we thought. But come to find out that where it's off grid, our, first, our initial plan was to fix the roof and then put a solar system in. So solar system with generator backup. You know, it's 2021. You'd think that's pretty common practice, pretty easy thing to do. But come to find out that they will not, banks will not give you a mortgage uh, because they don't consider solar a, a primary source. It has to be hooked up to a power grid. And same as insurance. Trying to find insurance is really tough. You can get seasonal, but year round insurance is very, very hard. So we had to get creative once again. So we end up buying the host, you know, because we have some companies and stuff. So we bought the host. And the only way we can get an actual mortgage on it is to uh, hook power up to it. That's what we're, the information we're getting right now. So that's the reason why this place was on the market for two years. 
people get scared of of things. You know, they look at the roof and they look at things. Oh man, there's a lot of work there to do. Uh, the road is going to be a ton of work to get the poles in here. It's 25 poles. A lot of tree trimming has to happen just to get the poles in. So that's why this place was on the market for as long as what it was. Of course, you know, I am super, super, super grateful um, that I'm able to do what I did to buy this place. Trust me. Um, <laughs> it didn't come overnight. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of late nights, you know, whatever. So the next thing is the trees. I know you guys are really passionate about the trees and bring in, cutting the trees down. Now, first off, I am not clear cutting anything. I am not cutting trees down just to cut trees down to make logs and all that. Um, potentially in the future, I may buy a, a, a wood mill and I'll be able to use some of the trees on the property for my wood mill to build, you know, other sheds or, or whatever. Um, that's just living off the land. That's just, you know, that's the way it should be done. So the only trees that I am planning to take down are the ones that could potentially damage or destroy the house or hurt my family while they're inside. I'm going to be in here with my family. Um, you know, I don't want a tree coming down across the roof and possibly causing uh, injury to, to anyone. So these big hemlocks, you know, right next to the cottage. A couple more out here. There's a few here that we're going to take down. And then over here where the sheds are, there's a few here that we're gonna take down because we don't want to damage the house, the cottage, the sheds, you know, any of that stuff. So those are the ones that are coming down. And then, you know, there's a few through here that we are gonna thin out um, a few. You can see there's a bunch of them coming down now on their own. A bunch of deadfalls. There's some deadfalls out here to clean up. But by no means am I, am I coming through here and just wiping these trees out. That is not happening. I promise you that. Next question. What is our plan for the cottage? So our plan for the cottage is to fix it up, do what needs to be done, get power to it, ideally solar, but it sounds like it's going to have to be on a power grid, and rent it out. I am not flipping this property, I am not selling. There's no way that I'm selling this property. I understand how much work went into this place. Trust me, I get it. I understand how much work went into this place and I just want to bring it back to its, you know, its, 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 former, its former glory. So we're gonna rent it out. So everyone stay tuned. You know, all you guys seem to love this place. Well, you're gonna be able to come visit. It will be, it will be able to be rented once we get the work done to it that needs to be done. And it will be a year around rental. Okay, so the next question. What happened to the previous owners? So for privacy purposes, I'm not going to indulge too much into, into them. Um, but basically what I can tell you is that everything that they want is uh, in process of being returned to them. There's some letters and you know, there's some postcards and there's a few personal memento items that they want. So we've, so we've arranged to have those returned to them through their, through their, uh, through their real estate agent. So those will be returned as far as as far as you know who they are what happened to them they're they are both still alive and all i can tell you is that they are extremely happy that a younger family couple was able to buy the property and has plans of you know bringing it back to its former glory because this place certainly meant a lot to them you don't got to look too far to understand how much this meant to these people. It is extremely sad that they're not able to enjoy it, but they're happy that we are. Um, we know that for a fact. So I'm not sure what else. I can't think of any other questions right now. I am going to walk through the woods later because I seen a bench actually all the way over on that side over there. But I will take you inside and show you inside. Uh, we did clean the place a bit. So yes, it is cleaned up some. But it obviously is still, you know, a bit, a bit dirty. But I'll take you inside and I'll show you some of the, like the squirrel signs and you know stuff like that. 
you know it's this was left folks it was left i promise you but it certainly certainly held up well and it is beautiful trust me i'm so i'm so grateful for this to be able to to be able to have a property like this um you know a couple properties it uh <laughs> i understand that a lot of people have a dream to have a property like this i, I get it I always did. I dreamed to have a property like this. I I can't believe that this property is still here. That even with that, you know, with the mortgage issue, that this place is still here. It is uh it is quite quite hard to believe. But a lot of people look at things like this and go, "That's just too much work for me to take on." I'm I can't I can't do that. And honestly, I don't have a lot of time. I'm I'm very busy with work and it's it's a good thing that it's only five minutes away from my house because it's uh it's one of those things that i just can't put all my focus on it it's going to be sort of in between times but I, I i know that i need to focus some time on it and i will and i can't wait to really 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 get going and and fixing this up one of the first things will be the roof for sure I'm going to bring you guys along for every part of this. Every part of this, you guys will be be along here with me. Okay, so we have tidied some things up. It's, you know, since you guys have seen it last, we spent... I spent the weekend back here two weekends ago. We've got the, sh the fire going right now. I'm going to try to move the camera as slow as I can because a lot of people are saying that I was making them dizzy. I apologize. I was definitely excited. Um, this wash nest or hornet's nest is not active. That is decoration. So some people were like, man, I can't believe they didn't come out when you started that fire. So I'm going to show a few things, you know, that shows that it was left. You know, it, it, it is clean. It was tidied. I don't know when or by who or whatever, but it is very dirty. There is, there are cobwebs. We have clean this up i stayed here i cleaned i vacuumed the floors i vacuumed the corners but you can see this stuff is like caked on and that's where <clears throat> there were some squirrel droppings and stuff so we need you know some hot water we really got to clean these floors that's for sure cobwebs weren't too bad actually but there was a lot of squirrel signs in here again you can see this stuff I didn't get this corner very good. You know, here's some cobwebs here, if you guys can see that. I know a lot of people didn't believe that they thought this was lived into right up to when we got it. But you can see there's lots of, of signs of it all along in here. I don't know if you guys can see because it's dark, but the squirrels were in here. There's a lot of squirrels around, so we're going to have to do something about that. You know, here's some every corner has has squirrel droppings and then in here in here is the room I really haven't cleaned much yet so you can see it all along here but that's fine that is fine we bought it for you know its structure its craftsmanship they don't build houses like this in nova scotia this is european this is how they build for snow load that's that's what they do that's what they do it's really incredible like it really really it really is as far as renovations in here um we're just gonna really update the bathrooms to be honest um the bidet is gonna go uh, there's no reason to have a bidet that's gonna go the toilet's fine it just needs to be cleaned you know, everything needs a good everything needs a good cleaning the shower needs to be probably just replace the shower now that i got the the plumbing fixed we'll probably just replace the shower with with a with a new one uh we'll see you know this one is still fine just gotta be put back together which is fun so nothing really in in, in the house is going to change like we're not changing anything as far as the walls go the ceiling goes the floors go the kitchen None of that. We have no plans to do any of that. We we're going to update the hot water tank. Right now it's on propane. We don't really want it to be on propane. We will, ideally it will be on power. And then this bathroom we're going to put a new one piece in. 
this is cedar so yes it is it is made to get wet and it can get wet but we're, we're gonna put a new one-piece bath in you know up so high and then the toilet again the toilet's fine probably update this a little bit and put some tile down we're gonna put some tile down on the bathrooms just because if people are here with kids or whatever and the water splashing around it can cause some damage but other than that we really have no plans to do cosmetically anything inside this place at all we love it like we absolutely love it we bought it because of its character because of its its build quality because of the way it looks so we have no plans other than a new appliance um probably take these back to my camp so um that's a score i'm gonna take the fridge and the and the stove and oven because that's propane back to my camp and i'm gonna use it back there so that's awesome that this was even here um so here's the letters and stuff and the postcards and whatnot that we're going to return so this is what they requested this is what they this is the only thing that they wanted uh when i walked around in the video the first time and uh you know right in this corner there was the eagle and then there was the crystal the quartz and everyone was like he's blown away by the eagle which is actually brass and people thought it was wood it's brass he didn't mention the quartz at all. Well, I didn't mention the quartz because it was donated to a local a local doctor. I think somehow they have acquaintances with each other. So that's why I didn't pay attention to that because it wasn't anything to do with me whatsoever. But everything else is really cool. Everything else is staying. Everything here, that canoe is awesome. Like all this stuff, it just, just screams European. And I absolutely love it like guys i am i am so blown away with this place i'm so so incredibly fortunate and happy to have this um this guy was was a master in his craft that's for sure he did not mess around he did not mess around um yeah crazy 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 so i am gonna go for a walk through the woods after a little bit and see if I can find that bench because there's a bench way on the other side of the lake and uh, You know other than some cleanup stuff outside This place is pretty much ready to roll One other thing that I wanted to mention um, there was a lot of like crafts and Knitting stuff and yarn and seashells and just all kinds of stuff in this room here and uh, We donated that to our, our local our local daycare where Bauer actually goes to daycare so they they we called them they said yes gladly we'll take those for the kids so we donated we donated those we're donated anything that that we can that we don't need from the place um but yeah i thought i'd, I'd throw that in because i think a couple people mentioned about a few things and yes we are donating whatever we possibly can i absolutely love this place this place is incredible well we're back here it's now sunday morning we got some snow last night i just got done from uh just got back from plowing a little bit of snow so we got a bit more work done here yesterday uh, this area here was like really 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 dark really grown in originally the road was really soft full of water all this was full of water because there's no sun getting in here at all so this is all we're cutting in here the cutting in here is done I will eventually rip these stumps out but it is nice and opened up in here now just to get things dried out that's what this is all about just to get things dried out and be able to get vehicles in because when I first bought the place you couldn't even get a vehicle in it was so so grown in and so bad but I thought of one other question come on guys let's go this way so I thought of one other question uh, that people have been asking me is how do I find abandoned properties so both of the properties were listed um, they're both listed on the market for quite a while my place was like a year this place was like two years they were still listed because of the other house was insurance purposes you couldn't get insurance and this house was because of mortgage and insurance and people look at the projects and just get scared of how much work there is and i'm just that kind of guy that that takes it on so that's why that's how um if you're looking for properties like that you can't be scared of the amount of work or what you think you have to do to bring it back to scale because if you if you're that if you're like that you're not going to find 
a place like this that's i mean you don't really find places like this but anyway but something that's extremely exciting is i found something else yesterday when i got here i kind of feel like every time i come here i'm gonna find something so we were here yesterday we turned this into a burn pit we cleaned up a lot of the old stuff that was falling down and piled up there's a ton of deadfalls out that way that need to be cleaned up so we started cleaning some of those up and i'm here standing looking and i go wait a second there's a walkway there so there's another walkway but it just happens to be underwater right now because again we've gotten so much rain here in nova scotia this past two months really so there's a walkway there there's a bench out there that's underwater so typically you'd be able to walk from here and then get out to this walkway but i found a spot right out through here on these rocks where i don't have to go through the water and here we go we are now on another walkway there's the bench right through there all right so let's go for a walk so I didn't even show you guys the first full walkway, but this is a whole nother walkway. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like a cultural thing for, for Swiss people. It's called a walk of contemplation. And it leads from home and returns to home. So I'll show you through the woods where this connects to, and then where the other one joins into the driveway, and then it leads back to, back to their house. So I'm thinking, that's exactly what it is but again this is built over top of the water unreal i i just can't get over it i honestly my mind is completely blown tony you're gonna be such a mess <laughs> the lake is to our right the whole time Like what a morning this is right now. You have a cup of coffee and just go for a walk. You know, this has got to take 25 to 30 minutes to walk all the way around the whole thing. It's just an amazing way to start your day. Get going, girl. Go on. Let me know if you guys want me to do like a full a full walkway video because literally that's all it, it would be able to be because it'd be so long. Just the walkway. I thought the other one was, you know, spectacular and it is. There's a lot of nice views on the other one. But this one, honestly, the view is even better. This section over here is a little bit soft, so I'm gonna have to replace some of these boards. But, like, just check this out. Absolutely incredible. So, over there is one bench another bench so that's where we came from that's the point out there like this is just spectacular i i can't get over it and that's not it for the walkway so it keeps going come on guys let's go come on so it keeps going through here Go on, buddy. That's Mr. Wendell. Come on, Tony. Here comes Tony. Keeps going through the woods. He gets to a point where, you know, the, the uh, forest is good enough to walk on. And then that's where he stops. But then he's got the whole walkway lined with rocks again. Okay, here's where it stops and it's dirty 
but you can see he's got rocks on both sides of the walkway to lead you back to the driveway. There's some down trees through here, but here's where the walkway goes through. So I, I got some cleaning up to do. And here's the forest, absolutely beautiful. So again, we have no plans of coming through here and clear cutting this, not at all, <laughs> not at all. So don't worry folks. This beautiful forest is not going to be flattened, I absolutely promise you. And it comes out. To the driveway. And here we are. Now there's a marker for a telephone pole. So obviously you know, some of these trees are going to have to be cut because they got to put poles in. And they're not putting poles in like this. So, the lines come right through there. So you can see there's going to be a few trees that have to be cut. There's no way around that. That's just the way it is. So I'll show you guys where the other end of the walkway comes out. And then, you know, that will have to be it because this video is getting, uh, video is getting pretty long. Tony took off chasing squirrels. Come on bud, this way. Let's go. Wendell, come on. <laughs> they got so much, so much to do here. It's a little ways away here yet where, depending on which way you wanted to go, one side of the house or the other, that'd be completely up to you. But either way, it does return to home. Looks so nice with the snow on the trees. Jesus, quite a ways away. It's up here somewhere, I promise. I think it's behind the sheds. Just walk in the morning. Yeah, here it is right here. So here's where it returns. And then it joins around. I know I haven't showed you guys this whole walkway yet, but I will eventually. But it comes through the woods, goes all through the wetland on this side of the house. Pretty incredible. All right, one last little view of the front here with the snow down. A little bit of ice out there actually too. Snow on the roof. I love to get that roof redone this this year, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, we're we're in December right now. So that might have to be a spring project, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, there's some ice out there, so this might be a nice little spot for for skating in the winter time, better than my my spot over at my other lake. But yeah, absolutely beautiful. Okay, folks, so that is going to do it for this one. I hope that I answered most of, preferably all, but most of your questions. Um, I'll put a link to my other videos on my other property and the original video on this property in the description in case this is the first time you're checking in. But I do appreciate you guys for watching. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, of all the videos I've, I've, I've made, this is probably my funnest for sure. And I'm just glad that the reception as well any other questions uh you know let me know i'll try to answer but it's gone it's gone pretty wild actually this video is these videos definitely taken off uh but yeah i hope i hope this answered a lot of your guys questions and put some of your your fears of the trees and stuff to to bed because that's not my intentions at all but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed it um until next time take care stay safe hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the bell if you like the videos if uh, you want to see me do something different, let me know. But that's it. Take care. See you guys. Bye.